So, I have not 10,000 people, but 17, I think it is, so we're going to move it on out. And uh, the recent hosts, and you know, they're, they're along the front row and they're up here uh, over the last 20, 25 years or so. Some of them, like Bob McDougall and Jimmy Pointer, they're, they're up there. <laughs> Lord, would you let them turn into 100 Hunter Street this morning, Lord? That would be a good idea. Now, I, I have Ron and Ann Maines. Now, Ron, for a number of years, you, you were hosting. You're still doing reports uh, in, uh, you know, from up above those windows up there. That's, right. That's where the 24-7 over uh, 13 uh, million calls have come in. Uh, but, Ron, I want to ask you a question. This is a question that you, you heard asked of you at the Arrow Leadership Course mm -hmm. in Vancouver, where Dr. Carson Pugh uh, led Arrow Leadership, and you were studying there, and he's a member of our board of directors at Crossroads, and the question is, Ron, what makes you weep? Now, this is not my question. That's from the Arrow Leadership. This is what you ought to be doing, they said. What makes you weep, and what makes you pound the desk? That was a question that, uh, that one of the teachers, one of the trainers that, that was pouring into our lives there at Air Leadership, and he said that you can really tell what the call of God is on your life mm -hmm. if, uh, if you ask yourself the question, what is it that makes you weep and pound the table? And, and that means what, what really is something that God stirs in your heart to, that, you, that you want to focus what you do in your life upon? And, uh, and so what we've just discovered fairly recently, but it's not something that, that's new, but we've uh, realized that one thing that really bothers me so much, it's the, you see the enemy's work in the lives, in marriages and families, and, and the, the way he destroys, kills, steals, and destroys lives through relationships. And that uh, has to do with what the focus of our future ministry is going to be on. And you'll be reporting uh, from the phones, uh, encouraging calls. I'll continue that. And uh, also the ministry is called Heart to Heart. And you know one of the things we've done through all the years, we've given phone numbers, we've given addresses, now we give emails. Uh, Ron, the email or the website, if you will, is? Well, just to, to back up a bit, Heart to Heart Marriage and Family Institute. Uh, was originally b birthed within Crossroads back in the 80s by Lauren Shepard, by Lauren Shepard. Mm -hmm. and has been recently Dave and Wendy Butcher ha have been giving leadership to it but it's something that, that Ann and I now have been asked to to lead into the future as well as doing the reports for Huntley Street but the okay. website is h2h h the number 2 h institute.com and you and Ron have chosen a little clip a little mm -hmm. flashback of uh, one of the most in impacting telecasts from your point of view that you hosted. What is it? It was one of our very first interviews that we ever conducted together back in 2001. Her name was Debbie Donald, and she was a quadriplegic. She had overcome so many um, obstacles in her life, and she had taught herself to paint using the paintbrush in her mouth. Mm. And so this was that interview. Let's roll it. At the time of the accident, you didn't know him in a personal way. No. Uh, bring us. I attended uh, ch the hospital chapel yeah. and stuff like that, thinking I was a Christian. But, but what brought me to the point? I started seeking harder when my stepmother died of cancer, and I couldn't understand why, Lord, why would you take? She was only 33, mm. and why would you take her when she has five children? And I'm disabled, and I can't help. I felt, I felt totally helpless. Mm -hmm. I thought, Lord, take me. She has five children, and mm -hmm. my dad can't do it. Mm. And we, uh, we so don't always. that's when I started seeking harder. Yeah, we don't always have answers. Yes, I, and, I, and I had this conflict with Lord, this, yeah. this battle going on. Okay, Lord, if you're, not, if you're going to take her, then heal me. So that I can help Dad. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right, Moira Brown. Now she was a radio host. Then she was a television host, professional, as Moira Hunt. And Moira, when I asked you to come 
to 100 Huntley Street. Before you met Richard, he was our most eligible bachelor. Uh, uh, why did you say yes? Well, God had called me out of secular television in 81. And I, that's after a year of frustration because I couldn't share the best I knew, Jesus. And when this door opened, that was a heart's desire fulfilled. I could say Jesus all day, every day. Yes. <laughs> and on national television for an hour in those days. You know, it's like we say, you know, people don't have problems. They, they may have a problem with a denomination, a, a doctrinal, you know, whatever. But people don't have a problem with Jesus. It's like mm. R.A. Dickey, and, you know. What, I mean, the guy was about to commit suicide. Now, only Jesus could step into something like that. Moira, what did you choose as a flashback from your interviews? Well, I mean, since 1988, I've been filling my treasure chest with sparkling testimonies and, and, and friendships on, on the program, in our viewership, and all these wonderful people here. But it was too hard to pick one. So then I thought, the very best gift God and Crossroads ever gave me was a man you hired before I got here, your then VP of Finance and Administration, the chairman of this building committee, my husband of 26 years. Thank you for hiring him. Where is he? Richard, stand up. Come on, stand up, Richard. <laughs> So, so actually, the moment you're going to so see is, clip? well, it's significant because he'd actually given me the ring uh, two nights before, but he had a little bit of cold feet. So this, this declaration is significant. Okay. <laughs> you, you just, you, you messed up my line. I was going to say, and here it is, the most important thing, I think, <laughs> is a decision that he just made last night. He put a ring on the finger of Moira Hunt. Here they are, the future Mr. and Mrs. Brown, engaged now. You know, you're on television. You, you were in commercial television as a host years ago. Uh, you have a name. Moira Hunt is widely known. Now, what, what are you going to do with that? He's worth giving it up. <laughs> How about a hand for an old-fashioned couple? <laughs> When I came here, David, do you remember the letter that you showed, the letter I wrote to you, and I quoted a scripture from Psalm 113, and yes. it said, um, you'll be seated with princes among the princes of his people. But the Lord didn't tell me then I was going to get to keep one. <laughs> Lord, I just pray your blessings upon Richard and Moira. Lord, I just ask that you will minister mightily to them in their own individual lives and together as a couple. Uh, thank you, uh, Moira, for your service. Thank you. Thank hey. you. And, uh, now, the next person coming along there, of course, she has her offices on Front Street in the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Almost makes me feel good about paying my taxes uh, <laughs> for the subsidy CBC receives. And she produces this magnificent television program. Lorna, tell us about the TV show Context. that you're doing now. Thank you, David. Context TV came out of 100 Huntley Street. Remember, you were so um, patient with, I kept saying, we've got to talk about current events at this program at Huntley Street. And, um, and you, you helped me craft a half hour episode, which was Listen Up and now is Context Television. So weekly looking at something that's affecting Canadian life and looking for where is God's hand all through it. Lorna's website, do we have one? Yeah. Oh, it's up there. Okay. I want you to contact these people and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, and thank you to David and Norma Jean and all of the Huntley Street supporters because Context was birthed 11 years ago here. It's, a, it's been a great gift. You've started so many ministries, David. You know, Lorna was uh, in what she called her home office in Steinbeck, Manitoba, and she, had, she was a writer, news articles. And I saw a, a news article from the front page of the Winnipeg Free Press, and I thought, this, this woman's smart. You know, I, really, I was impressed. And so, here we are. <laughs> and, and you invited me to hear you preach in Calvary Temple on a Sunday night in Winnipeg. And I sat there and I thought, he has a call to the media. And God, if there is anything I can do to help him, please sign me up. And you offered me a job after that. Lorna, what have you chosen for a flashback? 
you also gave me the ability to do field pieces. So you would, I could be on a plane and say, David, there's a story happening here, or I could be out in the, you, you always say, go, go, go. But you um, gifted us to be able to go to Cuba to cover the underground church. So to see what you know, uh, the Pope just did with the Castro family a few um, months ago in Cuba, unprecedented. Back in 1998, when religion was still closed, there was an underground church, and it was the first time I met persecuted Christians. So this is a clip of an emergency room doctor, Eliezer Vigia, who is trying to tell me the story of what happened when he was imprisoned with a bear chained in a Cuban bear cell with Ooh. him, although he didn't know the bear was chained because he was blindfolded. Aye, aye. Well, run the clip. Let's go. Our first uh, bishop, my father. In Las Villas, in other province, my father in 1965 was uh, put in the prison with other pastors and leaders, 48 pastors. Uh, I remember clear uh, the first visit. I say, you were six years old when your father was imprisoned, and you're remembering that at that moment. In, the, in the, that moment, uh, that was terrible for me. I, I know way that, uh, that the secret police uh, is a uh, dangerous man. And uh, I, uh, I'm very confused in that moment. Uh, when you suffer the same time what I suffer in, 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 in that time, I, uh, I feel the compassion with the secret police and my enemy. So I know an enemy. I love everybody because Jesus loves everybody. But uh, you, 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 you feel very bad. The persecuted church, David, is a gift that is for all of us um, who think sometimes faith should be timid. You've always modeled that faith should be vocal and loud. And um, thank you for letting us at 100 Huntley Street cover the stories of the persecuted church. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorna Dewey. <laughs> Our next, next there's a, a man that led us through the Bible. Uh, over a four-year period, hosted Huntley Street. In fact, you were hosting when Lorna first came. Uh, pastor of a great church, founded a great church in Jerusalem at the invitation of the government of Israel, of all things. And then he discovered there were thousands and thousands of churches in Africa who were treating the sufferers of AIDS like they had leprosy. And he set his cap to converting these pastors to a ministry of compassion and love and Jim, you sought to make the local church the center of love and compassion and treatment and medication. Thousands of local churches across Africa, Jim. It's true, uh, David. Uh, when I first started there 15 years ago, pastors would say to me, those AIDS sufferers are only getting what they deserve. And I would turn to these pastors and I would say, where would you be, where would I be if we got what we deserved? It's been an amazing transformation. And now we're working with thousands of churches in sub-Saharan Africa. We're looking after about a quarter of a million uh, widows and orphans every day. Uh, and it's feeding all... Feeding and medication? Yeah, medication, feeding, uh, fresh water, latrines, uh, yep. uh, education, you know, it's, it's very comprehensive, but... The ministry is called Vision Led. Yeah. I hope we have the, uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, your site but, up on the screen. But the thing is, everything is done in and through local churches. The church has been in Africa for 1,700 years. It's the most sustainable entity in uh, Africa. And um, it's an amazing story. I, I can still hardly believe it. Uh, and it's ongoing. It just keeps growing. Um, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And Jim, you chose a flashback. What yeah, I did. And you know, all the thousands of interviews I've done, uh, this was the one that came to mind. Jeff Still, his w one son shoots his brother and then turns the gun on himself and shoots himself. And here's Jeff, the parent, with two sons dead. Now, Jeff, a few years later, a uh, tragedy struck your home. Mm -hmm. Your oldest son, for God knows what reasons, in depression and uh, I guess anger and whatever, lashed out, shot this young man uh, and, and then shot himself. And suddenly there you were, 
Two sons, 23 and 21 years of age, yeah. gone. That's right. Now, this happened several years ago, Jeff, and yet I'm sure it's very much a living reality even today. Well, it is. When Beverly and I are away on a holiday or anything, we often talk about our sons. Now, how did God come into our lives? And how did he uh, keep us from sort of going under? Well, first of all, we are not uh, sort of good time Christians. Mm. We believe that, uh, that, that Christians have tough experiences yeah. like people who don't love Christ. Mm. And so we're in it forever. Like, as I said to a young man in my office, there's no other plan. Uh, Christ is the only means of salvation. And so uh, you, you just hang in there. The other thing is that we understood what it was to be lifted up by the Lord. Uh, there's a psalmist said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou discomforted within? And he said then, Hope thou in God. And to be a cast position has, is a shepherd's term. Mm. Where a, a ewe with a lamb inside it is, gets into a hollow and can't upright itself and will either die from lack of circulation or an animal will come and kill it. And it takes the shepherd to come along and pick that, mm. that lamb up and rub circulation back in and say, you know, everything's going to be fine. And uh, Beverly and I felt that, that God did that. We mm. discovered the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Mm. And he lifted us up. And we could never have overcome that in our own strength. We feel that God really surrounded us with his love. So David, he says he's not a good time Christian. And I thought, boy, how powerful is that? You know, it's, it's too easy for us evangelicals to be triumphalists, you know, and figure we've got everything cased and we have all the answers. Not true. We go through the valley of the shadow of death. We go through the dark night of the soul. And uh, one thing that you have been very clear on is transparency and vulnerability. You've done a great job, and I'm proud to be a part Jim, of it. You're starting a new TV I show. I am, yes, I'm starting a new TV show. <laughs> Tell us about it, uh, <laughs> briefly. <laughs> November the 2nd, November the 2nd, 1130 in the morning, Monday through Friday on Vision TV, Jim Cantillon today. Woohoo! Hey!